The film's kind of like a saga centred around a cop family. Um, can you just sort of, in your own words, set the scene for us as the film begins? Uh, yeah, the film opens up fairly much. There's a, a quick football match between the NYPD football team and, and uh, a team from Minnesota or Minneapolis, I can't remember. But it, then there's a shootout that takes place. You don't see on camera. The call just comes in. There's been a massacre. Four police officers are down. Four police officers are, well, three are dead. One dies on the way to the hospital. And uh, an investigation takes place into what they were doing in this building um, at this time and, and basically what happened, yeah. Uh, and uh, some information is unearthed that leads back to some dirty dealings within the, within the precinct and within the unit that I'm in charge of, I'm the sergeant of. Um, and it all comes back to this family of cops. Uh, John Voigt plays the father, the patriarch, and Noah Emmerich and, and Ed Norton are his sons, and I'm the, the son-in-law married mm -hmm. to his daughter, and uh, it kind of threatens, you know, the internal wrangling kind of threatens to bring down the whole family, mm -hmm. not just the, the particular precinct. Your character, Jimmy, he's a bit of a contradiction, really, isn't mm -hmm. he? On the one hand, he's, he's very tender to his, to his immediate family. Yeah, he's a good family, man. Yeah, but then as the film progresses, he kind of just gets more and more cutthroat. Yeah, you know, he's on. fairly sick. Yeah, yeah. He's fairly sick. He's I fairly deep into it. You know, he's somebody... I remember when I, a few years ago I was talking to a cop that had found himself on the wrong side of the law and, and he had said to me that it started with driving through an orange light and then breaking a red light. And it was that simple. It was all done. It's not done in massive leaps. It's all done in very small increments. And mm -hmm. you can rationalise, of course, anything. Uh, and then before he knew it, he was weighing over his head. And that's what happens to Jimmy here. You know, mm -hmm. he basically... I think started out with an idea that he was going to play the streets, um, you know, he's going to fight fire with fire and, and basically exist by the law of the streets and not the laws written by those who enforce it. And, uh, and he loses himself in a good family man, good father, good husband, but uh, very much a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He'll, mm. he'll basically do anything, sink to any low to get the job done. What he perceives is, is the job that should be done or needs to be done. There's one scene, um, I think you're in your, your family's back garden with Rick, Gonzalez. Yeah. I really enjoyed that scene. Right, right. Um, mm. Was the kind mm. of hard hitting subject matter like one of the main draws for you on this movie? That was the first scene. Um, yeah, it was. It was just different. It was, I mean, look, I played law enforcement officers before quite a bit, or soldiers and all that. You know, guns seem to be a, a fairly constant theme in what you would call a career over the last 10 years. And, but this was something that was very different. It was very, very guttural. Uh, and it seemed to be very pared down, very raw when I read the script and the character of Jimmy was, was just incredibly attractive to play because he's just uh, very proactive. Mm. Incredibly uh, opposing philosophy on life and how it should be lived to my philosophy and uh, whatever that may be. And, and so I knew it would be a stretch and I knew it would be a, an interesting adventure. I met Gavin, the director, and just wanted to be part of it, yeah. Mm. Let's talk about Gavin. Um, had you come across him before? I know he's, he's actually, no. him and his brother, there's, there's the sons of cops, aren't they? Yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, their dad's a cop, so that's why Gavin wanted the, the film to be told with as much integrity, regardless of how dark the subject matter is. He wanted it to be, to be treated with integrity and, treat, you know, he wanted the world to be truthful. And basically, the barometer by which he will judge his own success in relation to that is if New York cops go and see it and whatever issues they have with how certain characters are portrayed, mm -hmm. that they think that the world was... was a uh, done justice you know and it was presented in a truthful way and we'll find out that in about a week when it premieres in New York but but Gavin was it was it was a passion play of his for years uh, I think him and Joe Carnahan wrote the script three or four years ago but I'm sure it was mulling around in his head for longer than that and he was he was he was great to work with he set up an environment a rehearsal space and we rehearsed for about three or four weeks before we went to shoot which is very uncommon mm. I've had it a couple of times now in the in the 15 films I've done but it's very uncommon mm. and um, and it was great yeah he was constantly reimagining constantly working on the script and and uh, just created an environment of, of uh, play just play you know Edward Norton's amazing in it I yeah, really enjoyed yeah. his performance how did you find working with him great great mm. he's a fine actor I mean I've been a huge fan of his since since mm. primary fear and uh, primal fear and um, and I didn't work with him that much. I mean, mm. I would have liked to have worked with him more. We had two scenes, I think. The one at the at the kid, the dining table, Christmas Day, which is more about John Voight's performance that day, which kind of came out of nowhere because that wasn't scripted. Really, I was yeah, going to say. Yeah, Voight's bit wasn't scripted. Right. He just Gavin wanted to Gavin wanted to kind of present, you know, at that stage in the film, the idea that the you know this was a family that were really incredibly um, inextricably linked and and had a had a had a deep bond 
just to show the expense of, of, of the actions of particularly my character mm -hmm. and, and how they could bring apart, tear apart this really close-knit family. Mm -hmm. And so John said, well, let me have a little riff. And he went off and he had a little think about it and then they rolled the tape and he, he did that whole fucking thing about my family and the kids. Because and, and it's great, that scene. Oh, man, I swear to God, uh, Gavin mm -hmm. shouted cut and everyone was a little bit like, well, do we clap or what mm. do we find insulting? Um, but so I didn't work with Ed that much. I would have liked to work with him more, but I was a huge fan. He was a fine actor. Yeah, I mean, John Voight's stuff is very memorable in the film as well, yeah, like you yeah. just said. Um, and he's kind of trying to desperately claw things back and yeah, kind of yeah, maintain yeah. the honour of the police and keep the family together. But the film has a sort of inevitability to it, I think, as it progresses. Right. You, you kind of see... A driving force, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. going that way, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, no, there's... I mean, from the very from very early on in the film, you know there's going to be a reckoning. And you know that people are going to pay. It's just a question of who's going to pay mm. and who's going to come out victorious and if that victory, indeed, is going to be soiled. Um, so, yeah, it is. No, Void is very much... He's, he's a desperate man. He's a desperate man, and, you know, he's what they term somebody who who bleeds blue blood. You know, he's a cop through and through. Um but but it comes to a stage in his life where somebody's going to have to lose. You know, mm. the police force is going to have to lose. He's going to have to take his medals off, or else his family are going to be ripped apart. You know.